Hey there! In this video we are looking at vertical displacement of sine and cosine functions, or in other words, shifting the basic sine and cosine graphs vertically and seeing how those changes are connected to changes in the equation. Now we're going to explore vertical displacement with one of our basic functions here, y equals sine x, which has the shape that I'm sure you're familiar with. Starts at starts in the middle here at 0, up to the top at 1, down to the bottom negative 1, back up to here at period of 2 pi later. Now what you may or may not know is what happens when you take a function, any function, and you add or subtract a number to that function. So uh, if we say take this and now make this y equals sine x plus 3 for instance. Now it's not doing this, it's not adding 3 to the x. If you had to put brackets in here it's doing this, it's adding 3 outside of the function after you've applied the sine function. After you've taken the sine value for that then you're adding 3. Now when you write it you normally don't write those brackets so we can put it like that but you're welcome to write them if you like. What's going to happen here is you think about any point on this curve here like say this one that point that's right there. Pi over 2 the sine is 1. You put a pi over 2 in here and you get 1 here. If you think through what's going to happen down here you put pi over 2 in here this is 1 but now you're adding 3 to it so you're going to get a result of 4 here. Up here you get pi over 2 gives you 1 here pi over 2 gives you 4. This is 3 higher than that. You can try any other point you like. Let's say this one 3 pi over 2, negative 1. You put 3 pi over 2 in here, you get negative 1. If you put 3 pi over 2 in here, this gives you negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Whatever value you would have got here as a y value is now going to be 3 greater than that. So what that's going to mean is this point the y value is going to change to a 4 under that transformation and it's going to be up here. This one the y value is going to be 3 greater as well, it's going to be right there at plus 2. Every single point is going to move vertically by 3 and when we click this we'll see that. That graph, every point on that graph is 3 higher. Every point has been shifted vertically. This whole curve has been vertically displaced by 3. If we subtracted a number here, like minus 2, let's say we did that, minus 2, same thing's going to happen, right? This point now that you're subtracting 2 instead of 1, that point's going to be down here at negative 1. This point's going to be down here at negative 3. And you see that like that. Everything has shifted. So the center line of this normally is at 0. The center line now is at negative 2. This vertical displacement tells you where the center line of this function is. Don't, don't make the mistake of thinking that it's where this ends up, the, the bottom of the thing. It's where the center line ends up. All right. You could even put a you can put a variable in here. Often people use the variable d for that, and you can add a slider and then see it a little more dynamically, right? If you make this a number bigger than one, it's, it's translated vertically in the positive direction. If you put a negative number, it's translated down. So that is vertical displacement seen visually on our graph here. We're going to switch over now and summarize some of this and do a couple of examples. All right, so vertical displacement is what happens when sine x or cos x is changed to sine x plus d or cos x plus d. And what that is on the graph is a vertical translation or shift by d units up if d is greater than zero or down if d is less than zero. And a good strategy when creating graphs here by hand is shift the center line up or down and then work from there. So we'll graph a few functions here so you see what that means. This first one, sine 2x plus 3. The fact that there's this 2 in there with x means that the period is 2 pi divided by 2, or in other words it's pi. And then the fact that there's this plus 3 on the end, that's the d value, that means that this whole thing is vertically displaced 3 units up. So we're going to put a dotted line three units up to show where the center line has been shifted up to. Now looking at the amplitude, that fact that there's no number written there is the amplitude is one. So it means this is going to go one up and one down from there. We could put another dotted line at the maximum, another dotted line to show the minimum, and then we can start plotting some points here. 
the fact that this is a sine curve means it's going to start in the middle and then the fact that the period is pi pi later there's another point in the middle halfway between those it's in the middle halfway between the first two it's at the top and halfway between the second two it's at the bottom and then you can just continue that pattern and then over on the negative side and then draw a curve through all of them and then you have a rough sketch of the graph of sine 2x plus 3. For this next one here, this cosine, 3 cos x minus 1, the fact that there's a 3 in front there means that the amplitude is 3. And then the other thing we should look at here is it just says cos x, the b value is 1, so the period is just the usual 2 pi. Now the third thing to look at is that minus 1 in the end, which means it's shifted one unit down. So we'll handle that by putting a line to show the center line, one unit down, and then we're going to work with the amplitude. The function is going to be three up and three down from there as the max and the min. We can put another dotted line there at the top and one at the bottom, and then draw some points in here. It's a cosine curve, so cosine starts at a maximum point, so at the top there, and then the period is 2 pi, so it's going to be back at the top after 2 pi, and then halfway between those two points, it has to be at the bottom because of the symmetry. And then halfway in between the first two points, it's in the middle. Halfway between the second two points, it's in the middle. And then again, we can just continue that pattern over on the other side as well. Draw the curve in, and you have that graph of 3 cos x minus 1. Now we're going to look at one more graph here, creating it and writing down some info about it. This one has a slightly different b value. This is the b value 2 pi over 16, which means the period is just 16 not involving pi. The fact that there's an 8 in front means the amplitude is 8. We should notice that there's a plus 2 there, which means the vertical displacement is 2. Now we're going to generate the maximum and minimum by thinking about the numbers we already have here. This displacement of 2 and the amplitude of 8. The maximum is going to be the displacement of 2 plus 8 units up from that, and the minimum is going to be the plus 2 minus 8 units. Up and down 8 units from that center line gives you those max and min values. Then of course the domain is all real numbers and the range is y is greater than or equal to negative 6, less than or equal to 10. The fact that this scale here has a 10 there means that that one space is 2. That's where the center line has been shifted to. Our max is at 10, we'll put a line there, and our minimum is at negative 6. Then the other thing we should note is this negative sign here is going to mean that it's been vertically reflected. So we'll account for that. Usually it starts middle going up if it's a sine curve, but this has been vertically reflected, so it's going to be middle going down. So we'll put a point there. We know that the period is 16, so it'll be back in the center at that point. Halfway in between those two points, it's going to be in the middle. Now normally in between the first two would be a, a top point there, but it's been vertically reflected again, so we need to put that at the bottom instead. And then, of course, halfway between those two, it has to be up at the top since it's been reflected. And then once you've established that, you can just continue the pattern and then draw a curve through the whole thing to create that graph of that function. Now, one last thing we're going to look at here is how the vertical displacement is related to the maximum and minimums. So, like specifically in our case, if you happen to know the max and the min, how can you generate the vertical displacement if you didn't know what it was and you didn't see the graph? Well, the vertical displacement happens to be halfway between the max and the min, which seems pretty obvious when you look at the graph. Uh, in other words, it's their average, or in other words again, it's half their sum. Add them and divide by two. The reason we point this out here is because we can write a little formula that might prove useful to you. Vertical displacement is max plus min divided by two. If you happen to know the max and the min, you can generate the vertical displacement without even seeing the graph. All right? So that is a look at vertical displacement in sine and cosine functions.